Hey everybody, Professor Snart just checking in as we get um, right towards the end of our English 1102 course. Um, things have been a little crazy with Blackboard uh, doing all kinds of nutty stuff. Um, and I know it's been weird for the student side where all of a sudden all of your classes disappear, you're not registered for anything. It's been really wild for me where I open up a class and everything is there except I have no students all of a sudden. The entire grade book has disappeared. Um, but uh, things have come back kind of sporadically, and I think it's a little sporadic still for people, but it has made for a kind of doubly stressful end to our course. Um, so anyway, uh, this is uh, announcement is coming a little bit late because I've been locked out of Blackboard or unable to use it in the ways that we normally do, uh, just like you have for a little bit. So things are a little bit behind um, just as far as uh, there's no real um, video announcement for Unit 10, which is due today, uh, Tuesday, July 26th. Um, but that's, you know, there's not much to say about that that I didn't already say in the previous announcement. Really, Unit 10 is just the process of writing and completing the final paper. So you've been asked to work through, obviously, the drafting process to do an outline for yourself. It's really just to implement the writing process that works for you. Maybe you do some free writing, maybe you draft, maybe you start with an outline, maybe you mix all of those together in certain ways. Um, there's no real right, correct writing process. What's most important, as we've talked about in previous units, is that you're aware that even if you don't think about it, you do have a writing process. Everyone goes through steps to get things done. Um, and that while I'd never say that one is right and one is wrong, all I'm asking you to do is sort of be aware of what your process is, particularly if every time you write an essay it's a struggle and you're always bumping up against the deadline and it doesn't really turn out the way you want it. The problem isn't that you can't write or something like that. The problem is something just somewhere in your process isn't as effective as it could be. So the first step, step to really uh, you know, solving that problem is to be really conscious about what your writing process is. Do you have steps that are just out of order? Um, do you try to go from the idea to the complete essay without even really working through steps, which becomes, um, you know, you try to save time by skipping steps, but actually it makes it more difficult and much less efficient than if you were to work through a series of um, particular steps. So just be conscious of writing process as you're in the middle of it here um, finishing up the final paper. Uh, the other thing then is about sources. Um, part of the Unit 10 discussion board has asked you just to talk about your topic and uh, to mention maybe some sources you're using. Uh, there's just been too many people who have identified like, okay, I'm going to use database sources and our textbook. The textbook is the source of the primary texts we use, like the play or the short stories. But the textbook isn't a secondary source. Um, I've been pretty clear about this, so you really want to make sure as we get into this final paper here that you've got the right number and the right kind of secondary sources for your essay. And like I've said before, if you have questions about this, you're not sure, just send an email and we can correspond and make sure everything's on track. But you really don't want to go to all the trouble of writing and submitting this final essay and have you know, the incorrect number or type of secondary sources, which is one of those things that even though it might seem like just a little kind of slip up at the end, it really kills your grade because, you know, you can't walk away from 1102 not understanding the difference between primary and secondary sources. I was kind of thinking about this the other day, and it's like as simple as you take a sort of driver's ed class to learn how to drive, and then you do your driving test, and you got backing up perfect going forward is great, right turn, perfect, left turn, you can't do. You know, do you still get a driver's license then if you can do three of the things really well, but that fourth is completely wrong? Um, you can't really get through that kind of a course when you haven't got the fundamental skills kind of in place, um, and you're showing me evidence of that. So the driving example is oversimplified, obvious, and kind of you know, ludicrous, but it's meant to point to this idea that if you don't have the fundamental skills going on in the final essay, you know, 
you really can't be walking away from the course going, well, I can do just about everything except this one thing I totally don't understand still. So that should be, you know, a passing grade or a high grade, you know, let alone passing. Um, it really doesn't work that way. Uh, and I feel like I've been pretty clear throughout about source requirements and types and how to find them and what's appropriate and what's not and what's relevant and what's not. So like I said before, if you have questions, by all means, just be in touch if you want to double check one last time. Okay, so the other final thing to mention then is just clicking into Unit 11. Unit 11 has sort of two components to it. And we are, uh, as usual, under um, a lot of time pressure just to get this done because everything is so condensed. But the idea for the two kind of pieces of Unit 11 is first a pure editing. So you may not even have, because again, things move so fast, a completely finished, polished, done, completely essay. Um, but at some point, once you've got a fairly good draft together, you want to post that to the peer review discussion board. There's a list of groups with, um, I think, three or four students in each group. And basically, you're just posting your essay to get some feedback from those peers. Maybe you even have particular questions like, what do you think of the intro? Or does the, do the quotations make sense? Um, that kind of thing. So, you know, you can ask specific questions to get your reviewers to give you some specific feedback. Um, sometimes it might just be positive reinforcement that they understood the thesis and they get what's going on so you feel good about the paper. That's good feedback to get. It might be little things like typos here or there, or you haven't formatted something correctly, so it could be as simple as that. Um, so the feedback you get from the peer doesn't need to be like sort of, oh, you need to rework the entire paper. It might just be sort of positive, like things are going great, or smaller editorial things like a typo, spelling mistake, maybe a little MLA thing here or there. Um, so it can happen relatively quickly. It doesn't need to unfold over days and days and days of getting feedback. But obviously you want to post that peer review paper or your essay for peer review in enough time to let your group uh, get it, read it, provide feedback to you, and then for you to be able to incorporate that feedback. And then as the last part of Unit 11, of course, to submit sort of officially that final paper. There's a couple of little discussion boards that you're doing just to sort of reflect back on, discuss your writing process, but also sort of um, reflect back on how you've improved as a writer throughout the entire course. But clearly the focus now is just submitting that final paper. So that's due on Friday, July 26th. Um, or sorry, let me get that date right. I don't think it is the 26th. What is it? Um, and I don't have my calendar close by. Friday, July 29th. Um, so today is the 26th. Uh, Tuesday, so Friday, July 29th, you're submitting that final essay, and um, as is made clear here, I can't accept work beyond that due date. So there's no, like, submit it late and it's a late penalty. You have to get it in by that date. If you run into technical problems, just contact me through email, like, right away to let me know what's going on, but hopefully we won't have any major Blackboard issues. Um, and the other thing is to just let me know if you want that document returned with uh, comments or if the grade is fine. And either way, it doesn't matter. It's not a reflection if you just want the grade. It's, I don't think that reflects poorly on you because some people, they just need the grade. They want to know sort of points-wise where they ended up. Um, other people like the essay back to get some comments. So either one is perfectly fine. Just let me know. If you, um, if you don't let me know, I'll just assume that the grade is okay and that's all you need. So that's what I'll provide back. And I'll try to get essays graded uh, as quickly as possible to get them back into your hands or so at least you know how you finished up in terms of um, the course overall. Okay, so I think that pretty much covers it. Um, we really are getting right to the end here. So especially now, um, I'll just repeat once again, if you have questions of any kind, you know, be in touch with me. And hopefully Blackboard is working for everybody and you're <laughs> back registered in the courses that you had been working so hard on for the last four or six or seven weeks or whatever it happened to be. And thank goodness all the people are back in my classes and their grades are there too. So be in touch if you have questions and good luck on the final essay.